This week in lab, you are going to be setting up and performing either a simple or a fractional distillation. And this setup that I've put together right here is your simple distillation. The point of a distillation is to purify a liquid by boiling it, turning it into a vapor, and then collecting the vapors into another container. We condense them out as a liquid over there. What that does is leave the impurity behind in the original flask, and then you have a pure solvent. So um, the flask that you're going to be distilling from is inside this big heating mantle. So I'm just going to lower that down so that you can see the flask. So I have a flask here that, just for this demonstration, it has some water in it with some boiling chips. And when we heat this to boiling, it's going to boil up. The vapors are going to come up through the neck of the flask and they're going to go into what's called a distillation adapter. Um, so the vapors can go up and they can hit the um, thermometer adapter on the top here, but this is sealed so they can't go anywhere else. So they're just going to bounce around and maybe come back down and they're going to go down into this part that's coming off to the side. This is your condenser. This is where we want those vapors to go because this condenser is going to be cooled by flowing some cold water through it from the sink. And so the vapors go through the inner tube, they're cooled, turned back into a liquid, and then they come over to the end of the condenser and they drip down into your collection container. Now in lab today, we are just going to be collecting it in a 10 milliliter graduate cylinder. Sometimes you would connect another round bottom flask over here. Um, it's really kind of your choice. So that is a basic distillation. We call this a simple distillation because you're just boiling, vaporizing, condensing one time. We can also modify this to do what is called a fractional distillation. Now a fractional distillation takes a distillation, a simple distillation, and it has it repeat itself over and over and over again. And so what we're going to do is put this column, which has some copper mesh embedded inside where the liquid or the vapor is going to flow. Um, we are going to put that in between the distilling flask and the distillation adapter. Now what's going to happen is the liquid boils, the vapors come up and they hit the copper mesh, they recondense there. But then they're going to vaporize again, and they're going to condense farther up, and they'll vaporize again farther up. And each time you go through this vaporization condensation process, you purify your liquid a little bit more. So the theory here is that running a distillation um, with a fractionating column on it will result in a much purer product than simply having the condenser there and running a simple distillation. You guys are going to try this. Um, you're going to be distilling a mixture of cyclohexane and toluene. One of you is going to run the simple distillation while the other one runs the fractional distillation. You're going to be recording the temperatures um, that the thermometer records throughout the process. And you're going to be analyzing the purity of each of your products using gas chromatography. So now I'm going to pause for a minute. I'm going to take this completely apart and I will put it together step by step for you. Okay, now that we're zoomed in a little bit, um, I'm going to take you piece by piece in assembling your distillation setup. So the first thing that you need to have is a heat source of some sort. We are going to use a heating mantle instead of a hot plate just because it's got um, a spherical surface on the inside that a round bottom flask fits into really well and it heats the solution more evenly. Our heating mantles have a screw on the back of it so that they can be attached to a ring stand. And we actually do want to do that so that we can suspend our setup above the bottom of the bench. Um, so what I've done here is I've got a good hand width of space between the base of my ring stand and the heating mantle. Um, what that will allow me to do is if I start to um, overheat my flask, I can turn off the heat and I can also drop this down. So I'm going to raise that back up and now I've got my heating mantle in place. I'm ready to start assembling the glassware. So the first thing that you're going to put on is your round bottom flask. 
make sure when you're using a round bottom flask for a distillation, you never fill the flask more than half full. That way when it does boil, the bubbles are going to be contained inside here. We don't want anything but gas to be above the round bottom flask. So we do need to clamp this one, the round bottom flask, very, very tightly. Um, this is going to be the only clamp that is really tightly um, supporting the entire apparatus. So make sure that you have a good clamp and that it fits the neck of your flask pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and just put my clamp on. And I'm going to clamp my rings or my, uh, my round bottom flask to the ring stand really well so that is very secure. The other thing I'm going to do is make sure that that neck of the flask is going straight up and down because you don't want your apparatus to be going off at an odd angle. It should be straight up and down. Um, so now that I've got that really tightly clamped, I'm going to lower it into the heating mantle. And there's my uh, round bottom flask. Next comes, this has a lot of different names. It, some people call it a distillation adapter. Some people call it a three-way adapter or three-piece adapter. Um, that's because, well, it has three different necks. The first neck goes down into the round bottom flask. The one that's pointing up is going to be where you put your thermometer. And the one that's coming out to the side is where you put the condenser. So this is pretty simple. It just drops right in. And again, I'm going to make sure that that's going nice and straight. Um, the next thing that you are going to attach is your condenser. So this is where the vapor is going to be collected and condensed. So this goes on here, but if you notice, it's coming off at a downward angle, which means during your distillation, it could easily fall off and break, and that's kind of a bad day in chemistry. So we need to attach it somehow to the three-way adapter. We're going to use a rubber band for this. So what we do is we hook a rubber band to the water outlet on the condenser, and then when I put it on the three-part adapter, I wrap it around there, and this is kind of a slack rubber band, so I'm going to even do it twice just to make sure it stays. And so now that is not going to fall off. The next thing I'm going to attach is my thermometer. Now, the thermometer, you can't just put it right in here. You have to have some kind of adapter that's going to hold the thermometer. And so that's what I have here. This is a thermometer adapter. So if you look at it, it's got a ground glass bottom and it has a rubber top. Ground glass goes to the ground glass joint on the distillation adapter. And then your thermometer goes into the rubber portion of the thermometer adapter. It just forms a nice seal around it. So remember, when you're trying to put this in, don't grip it way up here. You don't want to accidentally break your thermometer. And then just gently twist it into the adapter, just like that. And then we're going to slip that back on. And you want to make sure that the thermometer ball is kind of bisecting if you look at the bottom of the joint that goes out to the condenser, kind of form an imaginary line connecting that all the way to the other side. You want your thermometer bulb to be kind of bisecting that line. That'll give you the most accurate temperature reading. So I could run the distillation just like this. I could hook up my water hoses and go to town with it um, and collect straight out of this condenser. Unfortunately, these condensers, um, they don't drip in a really nice way. They tend to um, send the drops all over the place. And so we are going to attach an accessory piece, um, a vacuum takeoff adapter. This basically, for our intents and purposes, um, it narrows the outlet into a nice fine tip so that those drops always drop down in the same place. It makes it easier basically for us to catch the liquid. Um, but again, this is at a downward angle, so this could fall off. These are very expensive. I don't want that to happen, so I am going to attach another rubber band. Um, so this has a port that we could hook this up to vacuum if we wanted to lower the boiling point. We aren't doing that, but it's a convenient spot to wrap a rubber band, and then you just hook it up to the lower water spout on the distillation adapter. Just to be certain, that this apparatus is not going to tip over because it's pretty heavy on the side here. There is a chance that it could tip like this, or if your clamp isn't as secure as you thought it was, you could rotate it inside. 
Um, so what we're going to do is set up a stabilization clamp. Um, and when I say stabilization clamp, I mean this is not going to be tightly attached to your condenser. All you're going to do is take a clamp and you're going to have it rest on the bottom of the condenser, but you're not going to tighten the top to the point where it's tight around it. Because when you do that, you have a tendency to force apart a joint over here. If you do that, if you have a loose joint, then your vapor, instead of going through the condenser, is going to come out of that joint. You're going to lose some of your product, and you're going to be inhaling the cyclohexane and toluene mixture. Um, it spells. You don't want to do that. So we're going to make sure that all of our joints are always nice and tight. Um, so I'm just going to put it on loosely. Rotate it around so it's about the same angle as the condenser and lower it down, put it on, and I went a little bit too low. These are always fun. Um, that's pretty good. And now all I'm going to do is just raise up the clamp until it is just barely touching this condenser. So now this is not going to be able to fall over because it's, um, it's being supported on the condenser as well. So the hoses. When you go underneath your sinks to get your hoses, there are two different ones. You've already used the thick hosing. We use that for vacuum. For water, we use the thin hosing just because it's easier to work with. Um, you need one on each one of these two water taps. So this one will go there and this one will go there. Um, now unfortunately this is really really thin tubing um, and so it has a tendency to just kind of fold over on itself and when it folds over like that um, the water flow gets stopped and we don't want that to happen. We want a continuous flow of water. So what you're going to do to stop that is just rotate the condenser so that the water taps are not going straight up and down. Have them go to the side a little bit, and that fixed it. Of course, that means you're going to have to fix your vacuum adapter over here so that it's going straight up and down. So that's it. Um, for the fractional distillation, what you're going to do is the exact same thing, except before you add your distillation adapter, let me take this off because it's going to be in the way here you are going to put in the fractionating column. So clamp your round bottom flask, put the fractionating column on, put the distillation adapter on it, the condenser, the thermometer adapter, and then your vacuum takeoff adapter. Now this is really, really floppy now because you've got so much added height. So not only are you gonna have a stabilization clamp up on your condenser, which is now much higher, and I have to move this. Um, we also recommend that you put another stabilizing clamp on the fractionating column itself. Oh my gosh, I can't just to tighten. There we go. Um, so let me get that one. Okay. So I have a third clamp here. Um, so what we're going to do is put another stabilizing clamp on the original ring stand um, and attach it to the fractionating column right here. Again, this is not going to be tight. This is just going to gently kind of cradle that fractionating column so that it can't tip over. So that is your fractional distillation. Um, one thing I did forget to mention, I did briefly mention it, Boiling chips, very, very, very important. When you distill a liquid, you have to have boiling chips inside, and that's because the inside of our flasks are very smooth. And so when you go to um, boil something in them, there's no rough surface for those small bubbles to form. Um, and so you end up, instead of small bubbles like you're boiling water for pasta, you end up with one big, huge bubble. If that happens, then when that bubble forms, it's going to burst and it's going to push all the liquid up into either your fractionating column or your three-way adapter if you don't have this. 
That's very bad because as I said before, you need the vapor and just the vapor to be going up here. Um, it's the vapor portion that is going to be enriched, not the liquid. So we will add some boiling chips. This just gives the liquid a rough surface to form those vapor bubbles on so that you get lots of little bubbles instead of that one big huge bubble and we don't um, bump our solution up into our setup. Um, if you do forget to add your boiling chip, you should just continue. Do not add it after you've started heating because if you're already at the boiling point, this could explosively boil. So just leave it alone, keep going. Um, and that is the end. Good luck.